if you know anything about Nicolas Anelka or Nicola Anelka, then you know that, you know, there are a couple of things in this documentary that really wouldn't surprise you at all. So, first off, for me, I rate Nicola Anelka. I rate him highly. I've always thought he was a beast. Back at Arsenal, I thought he should have stayed. But, you know, you get to see it even in this documentary. He says that when uh, Madrid come calling, you don't say no. The documentary is very interesting in that it goes from the beginning of Anelka's life in football, if you will. It's from a place in, in France called uh, Trappe, uh, Bonlieu. So Bonlieu is like, um, how can I explain it? So the Bonlieu is like outside of the city type of thing. So uh, think of it as maybe, how can I put it? Maybe like Zone 4, Zone 5 in the UK. If not, maybe a little bit further than that. But it's not central. So it's outside outside the bon lieu so it's it's on the outside um which is where a lot of a lot of good footballers come from they come from outside there because when you when you come from there there's loads of parks there's a lot of indoor football stuff to entertain youngsters you know and and you know we play on grass we play wherever we want pretty much you know a, a story similar to uh, Thierry Henry similar to uh, Franck Ribéry you know these guys that develop their skills playing on the street um, Ronaldinho, Roberto Carlos, all these guys, uh, Rivaldo, all these guys. So uh, it's a really cool documentary. It goes all the way from the beginning. Uh, there used to be a, a law whereby if uh, if you're a youngster and you've come through the ranks of a club and, 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 and you're now in the first team, you have to stay with the first team of the club before you get sold. And Anelka kind of was one of the few players that was able to say, I don't want to stay at uh, Paris Saint-Germain. I don't want to stay at PSG. I want to go over to Arsenal. You guys need to watch the documentary because the documentary is probably explaining it better than I am. Um, anyway, he goes over to the Gunas. Shouts out to all my Gunas. Uh, we won the FA Cup. It's not, it's not like the Champions League, but hey, you know what? You go a season and you win something. Otherwise, the constant jokes of how many seasons you've gone without winning any trophies come about. Uh, Hotspurs, Tottenham Hotspurs know about those kind of jokes. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's a really dope documentary. You guys should watch it if you're really into like football. Uh, dope documentary to watch, man. Honestly, really, really nice documentary. But I'll say that there's nothing about this documentary that catches me off guard because I've known about Nicola Anelka for some time. One transfer to Madrid was a transfer that I never understood. Uh, but after that, Pretty much every one of his transfers made sense. I did not know that when he was at Liverpool, he wasn't offered a contract. I did not know that because I thought that when he was at Liverpool at the end of the season, he wanted to leave. I did not know that Gerard Houllier did not offer him an extension. I never knew that. So this documentary sort of clarifies it for us. So that's pretty dope. Other than that, pretty much everything in this documentary is standard, man. Uh, the... The thing about documentaries like these is that the person that's being documented will forever be in a positive light. Regardless of their wrongdoings, they'll always be in a positive light. And that's what you get with any documentary. You can get a documentary about whoever you want. <laughs> well, maybe I'm exaggerating. Some people will, will have like, you know, will, will look really bad in documentaries. But f for the most part... Anelka has this constant reputation of being misunderstood, of being a bit of a rebel, um, saying what he wants. He doesn't uh, Madrid. He doesn't show up to training, gets suspended, uh, comes back, scores goals. It's you know it's chaotic. He's a, he's a troubled. He's a troubled striker. Is the image that we're being shown, and in the documentary, he's kind of justifying his troubles, but that's. But that's pretty much everyone, right? When people start saying, oh, you know, he's a troubled individual, it's because we're looking at it from the outside. And then that individual from the inside gets to come out and tell us why they feel that they are not troubled, why they feel that everything that they've done has been justifiable. So Anelka doesn't train at Real Madrid, gets suspended. What else? He goes to Liverpool. His brothers are influential towards... Um, Gerard Houllier not wanting to extend his stay, so they, they, they do something behind his back, which is shop for a better deal. He goes to West Brom. We all remember him at West Brom. He goes to Chelsea. We all remember that. 
those were the notorious times at Chelsea, man. Oh my God. As a gunner, I hated that. I hated the fact that Chelsea had uh, Florent Malouda, Didier Drogba, uh, Claude Makilele, Nicolas Anelka. I hated that. It was, that was like a time where, man, it, it was crazy, man. It was so crazy. But yeah, that's more or less the documentary. It's just Nicolas Anelka's journey. Um, and like I said, I didn't know about the Liverpool situation. So I'm glad that, you know, the documentary has highlighted this for me. But it's more or less, you know, Nicolas Anelka has a bad attitude. And then Nicolas Anelka will jump into the picture and explain why people think he has a bad attitude about a specific situation. Uh, his selection for the French team, why he wasn't selected uh, during certain times. He has an explanation for that. Uh, Liverpool, he has an explanation for that. Real Madrid, he has an explanation for that. West Brom, he has an explanation for that. If you guys remember, he was suspended uh, because of his goal celebration at West Brom. He has an explanation for that. So yeah, that's that's pretty much the, the mood of the documentary. Um, and for all you guys know, uh, the World Cup in South Africa, that was such a hype, man. I really, really loved that World Cup. The French team was so disappointing. So... The main focus around all that drama, uh, and again, you guys should watch the documentary, but the main focus around all that drama was that the French team weren't playing well. Uh, and then during a halftime team talk, uh, Raymond, Raymond Dominique, I think, it was, yeah, uh, Raymond Dominique kind of pinpointed Nicolas Anelka as the main reason for the team not playing well. And Nicolas Anelka kind of explodes and uh, in that explosion, a French magazine goes ahead and, and, and publishes this article that says that Nicolas Anelka, in that explosion, uh, told Raymond Dominique to more or less, uh, is more moda, basically. <laughs> he, Nicolas Anelka basically told Raymond Dominique, um, you know, that his mom can do one, basically. And that's been the story, really. So France... Uh, the, the the whole French team uh, rebelled against uh, Raymond Dominique. There was a mutiny. Uh, the French minister got involved, called the French players a bunch of immature children. Uh, the French president got involved. He didn't he didn't say much. He just said that if what the press is reporting is correct, then the team should be ashamed. If you were watching the World Cup at the time, it was like it was like you know proper drama that was happening. It was so strange, but. interesting at the time for it to happen so yeah it's pretty much what the documentary is about really it's just again you know people saying that nicolas said something to raymond dominique and then nicolas and Elka on the other side saying i never said that to raymond dominique and then funny enough uh there's an interview that comes out and a couple of years later raymond dominique confirms that nicolas and Elka never said those things so the moral of the story is Mis nicolas and Elka is misunderstood because people say one thing about him, but he's never said those things. It's just it's just more or less the gist of the whole thing. The World Cup, you see uh, uh, Patrice Vieira, uh, Patrice Vieira, uh, Patrice Evra, and the rest of the French team, uh, what was going through their minds at the time, they were like, hey, you're going to leave, that's fine. Uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to, we're going to not train. We're going to come out of the bus, we're going to sign some autographs, and then we're going to get back from the bus, and we're going to refuse to train. And that was more or less the, the the vibe around the World Cup, if you guys remember. And that was more or less the vibe around the French team at that time. You need somebody to blame. And so the whole French media, everything at that time, blamed Nicolas Anelka. Because but for Nicolas Anelka, uh, France would have had a reasonable competition. Um, and they blamed it on him. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. You guys want to watch a documentary, you can watch it. But really, if you've been following football, there's nothing surprising about this documentary at all. It's, I don't even know. I watched it because it was entertaining. The one thing I'll say is that, is that I didn't know that he, he wanted to stay at Liverpool, but that he was never offered a, a contract because Gerard Hulli at the time felt that he was being uh, disloyal by shopping around for different deals. But other than that, everything else is pretty much standard. His time at West Brom, everyone knows that. His time at Chelsea, everyone knows that. And um, 
the the whole French selection thing. Yeah, that that made kind of sense. But ultimately, the problem with Nicolas Anelka is he sometimes comes across as someone who maybe has excuses for everything. I feel, although the documentary kind of sets out the fact that he has a reasonable excuse for everything. So I guess I'm I'm potentially judging him wrongly. But I've always I've always ranked Nicolas Anelka. To me, the French strikers at the time were uh, David Trezeguet, Thierry Henry, uh, Nicolas Anelka, and who else? I think that's about it. I never liked Sidney Govou. Sidney Govou to me was trash. Louis Saha. Louis Saha to me was trash. And Gibril Cissé was declining. Gibril Cissé was declining so, so bad. So to me, those were always the, like my favorite strikers. But I could see why they would rather they would rather play... David Trezeguet than Nicolas Anelka. I could see why, but um, that's about it, man. You guys, you guys want to watch the documentary? Go watch the documentary. Uh, if you're football fans, if you're not football fans, then I, I don't know. I guess you can still watch the documentary. It doesn't hurt. Yeah, but that's just the moral of the story. Really, is that Nicolas Anelka gets painted in one way for his actions, and the documentary kind of clears out his actions to say that well they misunderstood and they painted me in this way and that's about it i just thought i'd do it because you know it was kind of funny when you were on instagram and you were looking at all these posts about nikola anelka's documentary and everyone was making jokes about the next documentary about the next footballer and stuff like that honestly i want to say nicholas bettner documentary i want to say a ryan Giggs documentary i want to say a john terry documentary I want to know how he slept with uh, Wayne, <laughs> Wayne Bridges' wife. I want to see that documentary. But other than that, I really don't care, man. I want to see a Ronaldinho documentary, uh, Roberto Carlos documentary, Claude Makelele documentary, Conte documentary. Other than that, I really don't care about footballers' documentaries, man, because at, at, some, at some point, especially, oh, the Thierry Henry, man, I've seen so many Thierry Henry documentaries, man. They always make me cry. But... At some point, it just kind of feels like Anelka is a victim. And he acts like a victim as well. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But yeah, uh, that's it for me, man. I'm out. You guys want to watch it? Go ahead and watch it. Let me know what you thought about it. Top striker. I just feel like when you're, when you're constantly changing clubs, you don't give yourself time to have legendary status. Because you don't spend enough time at one club to gain that legendary status. He was doing, he did one season here, two seasons there, two and a half seasons there. And it's like, when when do you ever get to do five? When do you ever get to do eight? You know, um, someone who could have been legendary status. But it's nice because it's refreshing. You get to see uh, Baba Arsene talk. You get to see um, Robert Pires talk. You get to see Patrick Vieira talk. Um... It's a nice documentary. It's a nice documentary. You can watch it if you want. But that's it for me, man. I'm out.